Hey everyone, so this is my third tutorial on my Power App here. Today I'm going to go over charts and kind of uh, sliding parts, I guess. We're going to move this gallery uh, as a chart appears, make it visible and non-visible. So the first thing I want to do is actually make this gallery a little bit smaller. So I'm going to move this delete icon over to the left and move over the select icon over to the left. And for the width of the gallery I'm actually going to uh, type it in here. I'm going to go about 425. And so that fits in a uh, nice and small little part right here. So we have our two buttons. I'm going to go ahead and move them up to the left. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a chart. And you can see that I have a good bit of data in here now. I just went into uh, my SharePoint and added a bunch of data. So with the chart, I'm going to start with a pie chart. You're going to see that it brings up some default data. And actually, it is cities, and, and it looks like uh, different uh, selections here. But this is all just default data. So we want to use my data. So to put in my own data, I'm going to go to the pie chart. You're going to click on the pie chart and select advanced. And in items, you're going to put in your SharePoint list or your data source. And for me, it's called Power Apps example. So right now, it's, uh, it's using the consumption series. But for the labels, we actually, I think I, I have it named first name. So there we go. We actually have uh, our city names in there. So we're actually using our exact data. So if we were to scroll down to Fresno, highlight it, hit edit, I'm guessing the consumption will be pretty high. The consumption's at 15. If we go to something like Albany, the consumption is going to be pretty low. It's at uh, 30, but a very high rate. So we have a pie chart already, and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so we don't have those scroll bars. There we go. And you can name your pie chart if you want with the label field consumption. So that's our consumption pie chart. Uh, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, a column chart. You know, just kind of show the difference. We'll have a column chart here. And once again it's using that default data. We want to put in our own data. So uh, for series one, it's using consumption, but I don't think I want to show consumption. I want to show the rate. And for the labels, we're going to do that first name again, which is the name of my city. Make that a little bit bigger, just so we don't have those dot, dot, dots. And we'll rename the title to rate. So now we have our rate and consumption. And uh, let's say you had a ton of data in here. Um, maybe you don't want to show all the data. Uh, what you would want to do is show the first in. And how many of them do you want to show? How about the first, let's, let's say the first five. So the top five now of the consumption will all only be shown. Um, that's probably something that's going to come up once you have a lot of data in there. You're only going to want to show maybe the first, you know, first 10, first 5. Um, for this one, I'll go ahead and do the first 10. First in, keep your data set in parentheses, then do a 10, which is how many you want to show at a time. So now we have. Let me uh, shrink that down there. Shrink down that city name. There we go. So now we have two charts and our gallery here on the left. Um, but what I really want to do is uh, do some kind of neat things here. And that's to add a, a button to show the visibility of the charts. And so for the chart button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an update context. And this is going to use a variable 
context. And then we're gonna do a, a parentheses and then a bracket. And I'm gonna call this variable, I guess just variable charts. And what we want it to do is turn on and off. So now when I press this button that is named button right now, I'll change it to view. It's gonna turn a variable to false and true. And if, if we wanted to prove that, we could put in a little text here and we could say var charts. So right now, it's set to false. Press the button, true. False, true, false, true. So that's, that's really awesome. Um, you can do lots of complex things using that false and true variable. So I'm just gonna leave that up here at the top. So that for the visibility of this chart, what I want to do, it's set to true right now. I'm going to set that to my variable. And I'm going to do the same for my rate chart. So now, as I hit the button, false, true, false, true, changes the visibility of my charts. So now that we have a visibility of this appearing and disappearing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this gallery slide over when I hit the false or true button and it's going to display some data. So how do I do that? Um, what we're going to need is a timer. So we're going to need input timer. So this timer, I actually only want it to be about a second. So right now it's set at a minute. So this is in milliseconds. So if I set it to 1,000, that's actually just one second. So one second timer variable. So I'm actually gonna have this button update context again with a variable start my timer button. And it's gonna turn to false. But also, after you select that button, so every time you press the button, it's gonna set it as false. But also, every time you press the button, we wanted to variable start my timer to true. And so now what we're doing is we're just making sure that the timer is not running and then starting the timer again. And so on that timer, on the start property, I'm going to use that same variable start my timer. So when I hit view, it appears my timer goes. I hit view, timer starts over, and goes again. All right. So now that I have that variable on start my timer, what I want to do is when I click this button, I want the gallery one to push out to the right and take the space up of the consumption and rate charts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build an if statement on the width. And the if statement is going to be if variable charts is true, then it's going to be 425. If it's not true, it's going to be 425 plus, and I'm giving it a little bit more space, so I'm, I'm kind of estimating what's the space right here. I'm going to say it's 725. And that 725 is going to slowly build out over a second. So we're going to use timer one. And hopefully it is timer one. Yeah, timer one. Ah, that's the problem. I have to multiply here. So it's going to be seven. It doesn't know arithmetic like we would know. You have to add the multiplication um, before the parentheses. So timer one dot value divided by timer one dot duration and that's going to be our width so let's go ahead and give it a play so if I hit view look at that it grows I hit view it closes it grows it closes so there's there's one little thing that actually drove me crazy and that's that double double view right there. It's like for one frame it appears on the left and that's because the timer is actually starting at 1000. So 
So the timer starting at 1000. So on the timer, what we want to do is on timer end, if variable charts, that's the same variable, if it's true, then we want to reset the timer. Else, we don't want to reset the timer because we don't want it to close by itself. So now, when we hit view, it opens, it closes. It opens, it closes. And that's really neat. And so once we hit view again, I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to actually give it a little bit of space here. Actually, I'm going to copy this formula and cut it out. I just want it to be... Uh, 1100 right now and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in here to the labels I'm going to say it's this item dot rate but in front of rate I'm going to put rate and this dot rate and then I'm going to say and consumption And this item dot consumption. I'm going to spread that out, and I wanted to have a good bit more space in there. And you could do it with multiple labels if you wanted. And actually, I think that's what I'm going to do because it looks a little funny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this as one label. Then I'm going to create another label inside the gallery. And this one is going to be consumption. So now watch this. When I hit the view button, oh, I forgot to update my formula. Let me update my formula back. And I, I put that in my clipboard so I could just paste it right back in. So when I hit the view button, we have the charts, and then boom, comes open our data. Charts, and boom, we can open up our data. We could put zip code in here too if we wanted, but I just think this is a really neat feature and it could be used for all kinds of different scenarios. Um, this is just the one that I thought of off top the he top of my head. So now, our data comes right on out or we can view our charts. And pretty much that's how you use charts and kind of move galleries around and make your app really, I guess the word is cinematic. Uh, it's a really neat feature. It could be used for all kinds of moving, um, I guess title bars or buttons. Say if you wanted to use that little hamburger menu like that's on a phone, you could make a sliding menu come out but now we have a view button for our charts and we have a, a data view for our gallery. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll be creating my next video here in a couple weeks. I think I'm going to try and do it every two weeks. Create a new Power Apps video. Thank you for watching.